All right. And should be live on there. And let's take it to the <clears throat> and take it to the audio. And the audio should also be live on there. Very challenging uh, getting to the gosh darn podcast, right? Um, Working uh, regular hours again, not the mandatory seven day work weeks, but regular hours again, uh, trying to uh, rake up apples from the backyard that just fall the fuck out of the tree right. and then make it into a, a bee cafeteria. <laughs> And trying to rake those apples up, get them into totes and slam them together, mush them up, mix them with soil and little twigs and shit and sort of do what Europeans call composting. I think it's just literally environmentalism, quite literally interacting with the actual planet as is, right? Like taking actual dirt from the ground where we live and then taking apples that grew out of that dirt, fell into that dirt, mush them back into that dirt, enrich that dirt so that when the rain falls, that dirt is good to grow strawberries and shit in. Mm -hmm. We're giving it a go. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, <clears throat> what the holy fuck em damn is going on? Uh, we're going to figure that out right here quick and fast uh, before I go get to another goddamn shift. Oop, drop that one bring this one up uh all right so Tariq Nasheed grifting ass useful it looks like he's posting a useful story but it's just a video clip with no link but he does have commentary that is useful for you <laughs> and also um multiple outlets are covering this but it is the exact same story uh Nasser came up with a new visualization tool to uh to uh for rising seas all right uh just to kind of help folks see what's happening there and also rising seas may lead to extinction of small island nations um interesting uh so there is a, a story from a little over 12 hours ago of a los angeles piggy department boy punching someone who was secured secured to an ambulance stretcher right. and it gets better uh, Nikki Minaj and her rapist boyfriend are mad that her rapist boyfriend is her rapist boyfriend they just can't stand that well they're married now but yes rapist husband ah ah I'm a lot more respectable when you say it that way all right so let's uh let's skibble babble flab and double darble onto the mark and flobble in father Teresa's wine cellar we believe all oppression is intersectional and this means our analysis of current events frequently includes discussion of difficult and explicit content any combination of the following topics could be included in our show murder rape war climate change racism sexism violence, sexual violence, homophobic violence, heterocentrism, discrimination and abuse against individuals of nonconformist sexuality, domestic violence, child abuse, child rape, child neglect, elderly abuse, verbal abuse, police brutality, microaggressions, ableism, cyberbullying, genital mutilation, ideological extremism, and people just being total fucking assholes. All right, mm. right. Uh, checking the uh, the 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 face booze lively decibels. They're not live. They're lively. Lively. <clears throat> All right, buddy chief. I think I'm gonna jump straight at Tariq Nasheed quicker than fast faster than quick and my bad the podcast ain't been on hit yeah it's that dr really? sue shit wow yeah because uh, also we are having a hard time with the education of a 13 year old yep. yeah that shit is fucking gruff uh and that it is killing the fuck at a time and it's like shit i gotta get time like 
just me, like I'm talking me as an individual. Phoenix Kalita is here. If you're looking at the video, there she is. Right. But like me as an individual, I've got to get time and energy over to Phoenix Kalita. I've got my biological niece. Got to get time and energy right there. Uh, job. I got to get time and energy there. Yard. Time and energy there. Myself. Time and energy to me. 13 year old. Oh, shit. I'm running out. <laughs> And then it's already very hard. <laughs> yeah, because he's had the internet for these years. So, like, I have a, um, I, would you say white passing or white? Just white. Yeah, really, just kind of straight up white. Like, there is not an African feature or an indigenous feature. Jufro is the best you got, but get it wet or comb it. Yeah. Yeah. And other than that, yeah, I guess a, a white teenager that I don't know exactly how many years, basically, however long he's had a tablet with no supervision, which how long was that? Because when I showed up, he was eight yeah. with a tablet with no supervision. No, it had locks on it then. That particular tablet. But um, yeah, it's been a while. Well, okay. It was a while. Yeah. But when he and was then after yeah. we took everything away, we found out like there was the the sneaking of the tablet back in, and there was the, yeah. Yeah, and he's just been um, consuming white supremacy, like re like basically the manosphere. Like the thirteen year old has been consuming the manosphere propaganda, and we are trying to fix that. And that shit is hard. <laughs> yeah. All right. And so, but I still have to get the goddamn program done. All right, uh, shout out to uh, to Max over there. Or not, I said Max, Matt <laughs> over there, who uh, regularly hits me up on the Patreon. I like getting the messages. Thank you. Um. All right. So I was hopping over to Tyreek Nasheed. Tyreek. What the fuck did you just say? Tyreek. Oh. Okay. Tyreek. Tyreek. All mm. right. Nashiticals. There is a lot of shiticals happening indeed. Now, really, I think that this would be like a useful video to be able to see. I should probably look at your decibels real quick while you yes. speak. Oh, yes. Looking at my decibels. Yes. I know they're a little bit low because it is like five o'clock in the morning and I'm not. <laughs> my voice is not fully awake yet. Yes. All right. So, um, ooh. And mine are up uh, too high. All right, I can just get back from the microphone and riff it. Um, <clears throat> so Tariq Nasheed, as it tends to go, he um, he has a video up. I actually go to his page for like interesting video clips of, you know, like racism and whatnot. You know, and that's really all you're going to get is the clip, right? Here's the clip, no link. And um, I guess if you're uh, you're listening to podcast audio... I can uh, make a day, make a describable phobia, mm -hmm. and let me uh, bring that up. Um, shit! Oh god! And app window. No oh, shit! And the Tyreek Nashid. There it goes. All right, so let's go ahead and um, and play that their video clip. Now, we can really just get the gist of it, right? It appears to be a woman dealing with a custody issue with a baby. That's what it appears to be. But we don't really have much beyond the clip. There's the police fellers, right? There's the a white, a white man in khakis mm -hmm. with a tucked in button up shirt <laughs> mm -hmm. looking very CPS, maybe someone who appears to have on scrubs. Yeah, but I don't see much. Uh, there's another pig in the frame. Let's see. All right, I, I see a dark skinned black woman appears to be working class. Um, I don't know what building they're in, right? It looks like they might be in an official office building by that green paint on the wall and the hardwood looks like floor. A generic medical facility, generic medical yeah, facility, like hospitals, doctor's offices. It's that type of paint job. Okay, maybe that explains the person with the scrubs on, and then also that explains the name to the at 
in the screen at Sacred Birth Doula. That also explains that. Oh, probably some hotep uh, forced birther. I don't call any of them pro-life, no matter your race. Um, I would fall back from forced birther just because they're a doula, which tends to be a little bit more friendly towards the pregnant person than other folks. Generally speaking, um, also but, Hotep means peace, and how peaceful are them niggas? They are not peaceful at all. Yeah, but yeah, I would be super interested um, to know more about the backstory. Just like, okay, so if a doula is involved and it says sacred birth, and there's a dark skinned black woman who's um, in a situation, yeah, I would actually like to know more details. Yes, and um, it, it appears that she has on a pair of house shoes. You know, so maybe she was uh, ru- rustled up at an odd hour. Mm-hmm. Maybe. All right, let's uh, continue with the clip. It's only 57 seconds. I'm talking right here. This is what I'm talking. So look, what y'all want to talk about? And it looks like a very, very small baby with their face blurred out. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not very good at guessing amounts of months old. And she's saying, um, I'm talking right here. What do y'all want to talk about? What do y'all want to talk about? All right, and someone uh, she, I can't hear the pig much, but she said the baby's not staying here. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah, that baby's like three months old at most. Okay, about That's three a baby, months. Baby, baby. And also, no one's helping her carry shit. She has mm-hmm. um, lots of things in tow. Mm-hmm. Look, let me tell you something. The baby does not have any drugs in his system. Does he? Okay, she's saying the baby does not have any drugs in his system, does he? Does he? Does he? Up oh, and now they they gaslight you and frustrate you until you yell, and now you're just being crazy. Right, which is also interesting to me that she's surrounded by so many more cops than medical staff at this point. Yeah, there's a is that is that another pig in the yep. back or that's yep. a, I can, yeah the uniform's a little blurry. It's either a cop or a security guard, but I mean at this point that's basically the same thing. Like you know, so she's surrounded <laughs> by violent people now. Right, like with a ball works. holding a baby. All right, so now if you folks, uh, I know the people listening to the podcast, if, if you're not listening to the podcast, uh, you're missing what the video folks are seeing. And it's um the uh, they the pig went to grab uh, the what is that? She's is that called a bassinet? No, no, no. Um, the car carrier, um, the the car seat, the baby, the infant car seat. Okay, that's an infant car seat. The pig grabs it to the point of where they turn it uh, very close to sideways. Yeah. Not full on horizontal, but pretty darn close to sideways when the pig grabs this thing. And pretty damn unexpectedly, it's almost like he thought he was being slick or something like yeah. snatching a dollar out of someone's hand when they're by a vending machine. Mm-hmm. Like it very sloppy grab because I'm, I'm sure this is a very pro-life pig. <laughs> um, yeah, what but I- as, as I, hear, I heard her say, uh, my baby in this. And then you mentioned she was carrying a bunch of stuff and looked like she was wearing house shoes. I bet you she just gave birth like a few hours ago. Oh, so this is less than three months old? I mean, oh yeah, I said three months at most because that's a little baby. Mm. Um, but yeah, like that's like a baby baby. And this, yeah, she might've actually just delivered and is just trying to go home. Mm. Cause I actually had a, sub- well, not like to this extent, but I did have somewhat of a similar situation. Um, yeah. Oof. Yeah. They actually don't like it when you get too mobile after you have a baby, they get very upset. Oh, they don't want you to get up and go. Mm-hmm. All right. Keep in mind, we're, we we have to yeah. speculate because it gets yeah. better because the story is actually about Tariq Nasheed. Right. Daddy? Daddy? You hurt my baby. You hurt my baby. You hurt my baby. You hurt my baby. Don't do that. You hurt my baby. Hey, don't do that to me. Let go. Let go of me. Who you No, no, no. You guys, I have my phone as long you guys cannot do this to me. I know, but you guys are trying to take my baby. Please take off me. Also, I just have to point out that um, if she did, like, just, like, recently give birth in the last, you know, 
day or so and they're doing this to her um after you give birth you just bleed everywhere Hmm. just because you have like i mean you had a baby right yeah so like your body is doing so much stuff so the fact that cops are like fucking her up like um assuming that this is her baby like so close uh after giving birth right because you yeah. have your stitches and you're bleeding oh and you shit get fucking hemorrhoids and like your body is trying to reconfigure because it just lost like 20 pounds literally in a few hours like yeah. like your body is real so yeah like this is an especially um heinous <clears throat> heinous time to be fucking putting your hands on someone like i mean obviously a cab all day anyway but like if she did actually just give birth to a baby this is fucking grimy as shit to just put her that put hands on her like that yeah <clears throat> right and what appears to be the social worker with the fucking khakis and the buttoned in buttoned up short sleeve shirt tucked in that's a look like if you're not a factory worker who has your shirt like that so it doesn't get caught on a conveyor there's some creepy about that look <laughs> yeah it's a weird that. look yo and the movie office space really pushed that <laughs> right <Not office> space. <laughs> with the character that said the ass clown line like he stayed and they said that like that was a deliberate comedic choice because right. you look ridiculous yeah i don't know why it, like it's like worse than if you had on a regular suit <laughs> when you just have the buttoned up mm -hmm. short sleeve but tucked in shirt yeah with your weird. fucking khakis it's like flair <laughs> same movie you guys i have my broke as long you guys cannot do this to me i know but you guys are trying to take my baby please let go of me i'll cut it back like you don't let go of your arm no please let go of your arm i'll cut it but please like it sounded like he's saying, let go, let go. I'm going to cut it. It sounded like he said, I'm going to cut your arm. It really did say like he, he said, cut your arm. Yeah. Once again, please I'll cut it back like you don't let go of your arm. No, please. Let go of your arm. I'll cut it. Let please, like, oh, no. I'm yeah. It sounds like a violent threat about cutting her arm. And, and I just, I can't really catch it because it's, it's muffled. Mm -hmm. The individuals behind a mask. And I don't know who's recording. Right. Now, here's one of the comments immediately under um, Tariq Nasheed posting this. What is the backstory? Where is her husband, uncle, oh. brother, father? Cut. He went with all men first. Mm -hmm. And you know where the men are. They're probably listening to Tariq Nasheed telling them they have to have a play a phase. So they're probably out getting some pussy so that they can go through their play a phase and make more babies go through this. Maybe I'm guessing if they're Tariq Nasheed fans, because I mean, what but also like that um, mentality is so irritating with the, like patriarchy's patriarchy is going to save you. Nigga, I don't know if you've seen how police treat black men in America. Yeah. But like, even if a black man is trying to help me or protect me or help children, there's no guarantee that's going to go well because I don't know if you've heard about white supremacy in America. And then here comes the uh, more, more stupid shit in the same comment. Tariq Nasheed fans are so fucking stupid, right? So the whole comment goes, what is the backstory? Where is the husband, uncle, brother, father, cousins, aunts, mother, sister, and other extended family members? We must support our people in numbers by our presence. She should not be there by herself alone. Well, nigga, where are you? Right, right. So fucking go there then, shit. Right, like right now where you live, a black woman's going through this, but you're following Tariq around on Twitter. Mm -hmm. You ain't doing shit. <laughs> Maybe under his comments, someone has a backstory. Uh, first person, Aluaha Sacred. Oh, here, one of these sacred niggas. Uh, fucking. They have a comment that doesn't have the backstory. Mm -hmm. The next one, Javez Aikuru. I love these niggas named fucking Carl and David giving themselves <laughs> these new fucking Hotep nicknames. Right. <laughs> Akuru uh, has a comment. It only says they only let one visitor in the hospital now. All right, where, where niggas at in the parking lot? Malcolm X had niggas all up out in that parking lot. Tariq Nasheed has more followers in Twitter than Malcolm X had in that street. That's make, true. make it happen. Um, the next one, GKV. Oh, Gregory. All right. This is one who did not give himself a new Egyptian name. Uh, <laughs> 
you expect them to be in the same room at the same time. Uh, they're not sure. So no one has the backstory. Nope. But, and also Tariq Nasheed did not post any links to any articles with this. Yep. Or any interviews. And I'm pretty sure if you go to his podcast, like Phoenix Kalita pointed out earlier, he probably doesn't have her featured on to ask her what the deal is. Yeah. But he does have a commentary. His commentary is this. They are multiple. Mm -hmm. Those are the first three words. They are multiple. <laughs> right. Well, as a, a good start. <laughs> as opposed to there are multiple. Uh-huh. They are multiple videos from around the country showing race soldiers and CPS workers snatching up black babies from their parents. Mm -hmm. The parents have to go through red tape to try to get their children back. This is the exact same thing they did during slavery. Hashtag Hidden History Museum. Right. Because, what up? Oh, just, uh, no, I think um, my original thought about this still stands with regards to Tariq is that he does have the opportunity. He does have a platform. He could, um, you know, put her name out there. He could, um, you know, blow up the name of the cops who were involved in this. He could have her on his show to discover the backstory, but part of me feels like he's just posting it for clickbait, but then also um, to like a lesser degree, letting his fans figure out the backstory because he doesn't know if he, he, he's supposed to slut shame her or not yet. Woo. Or like critique her or whatever. Because like, I see the way she's dressed. She's in like something I would sleep in and wearing house shoes. Like if you got me up in the middle of the night, I would look like that too. But I know that these are the same crew who like, this is why nobody respects black women. Y'all just be out like this. And remember, wow. Tariq Nasheed reversed his uh, position on bonnets. Right, right. Bonnets are raggedy. That's hoe shit. That's in the street shit. So part of me is also wondering if he's intentionally not covering the, uh, looking for the, like leaving it without that commentary. So that if it turns out he can find something to doubly monopolize off of her for, like in a slut shamey way, he's totally going to do it. Ah, that, that's if it's, if if he even remembers it beyond posting that clip. Right. Yeah. If enough people comment, he'll suddenly remember. <laughs> and uh, and right now, and why did he put hashtag Hidden History Museum? Well, his one million dollar fundraiser to open up a uh, museum mm -hmm. uh, is at six hundred thousand now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's got to get that other 400,000. And if this is the emotional clickbait he can use to do it, yep. let's fucking do it's it. It's so embarrassing. $600,000, y'all niggas are wild, wild. Like with how many fucking uh, fundraisers and uh, YouTube super chats and the Cash App ones aren't even public. Who knows what the fuck is Cash App and PayPal. Mm -hmm. And that's between Tariq Nasheed, Boyce Watkins, Jason Black, right? Uh, Gus T. Renegade, the Neely Fuller, like all these so-called uh, black empowerment folks. Yeah. Like, again, I've been saying this probably for about four years now. Um, they could have been fucking um, like, fuck Umar's school. Take over a city. Yep. Show them how it's done, right? Not a city too big, like the size of Tacoma or Elgin, Illinois, mm -hmm. right? Get a city. All that funding, you could take the city councils, mm -hmm. you can take the school boards, mm -hmm. and you can start passing ordinances yep. and rules yep. of Black empowerment in yep. those cities. Like, imagine if we had our own town and on our school board, and one of the school policies we passed is that you cannot um, punish students for having natural hair yep we could just do that <laughs> yeah or we um we're opening up investigations on any allegations of racism by, uh, uh against teachers by students yes opening them up let's go yes but he's uh, a, he's museum. a museum he's opening a museum <laughs> and dvds about buck breaking right which is so wild to me because like for a million dollars do you know how many houses you could buy Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You could put uh, people through school. You could buy land and uh, work on a food sovereignty program. You know what I mean? Like there's so many things and, you know, every day these people, you know, I keep hearing that these people are about black empowerment and they're not grifters, but like, what are you getting? DVDs. 
oh. that you pay for that you DVDs that you pay for after you already funded the making of them by buying those raggedy ass t-shirts. Yes. So you have a t-shirt and a DVD. But now there's so many you can get a box set. So you have a box of DVDs. Yeah. That's a very, that's a cooler case. It's like it's all, it's like how I have the Leprechaun movie box set. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, it's it's just a Warwick Davis marathon over here. <laughs> all right. But yeah, so yeah, they have money for that, but never for shit that actually matters. Just wild. And people keep falling for it. Yes. Yes, they do. Wild. And then also just more a little bit more of his bullshit, right? Which this would be an interesting story I'd want to cover just as general interest. Mm-hmm. On nbcnews.com, the forgotten uh this forgotten slave language is seeing a revival thanks to TikTok. Have ugh. you heard about that? Yes. Oh, is it uh, you you did the ugh. Oh, because it's again one of his things to capitalize on. Oh, I thought you were like, talking about the language. No, like, yeah, that. yeah, it's like a really deep sort of like patois type of. Hmm. But it sounds like kind of sing song. It sounds cool. It sounds very like sing songy. Okay, and yeah. uh, and right and CB they they have that. But then here's Tariq Nasheed's commentary over it. Mm-hmm. The mainstream media is jumping on this already because they see how quickly we are getting on code with this language. Tariq Nashi. What language? You don't speak that fucking language. It's not even English. <laughs> <laughs> he says we the way white vegans say we. No, He's, nigga, no, ain't no he we. He says we the way the Queen of England says we. Oh, shit, lace me up. Oh, the royal we. Oh, that's, yeah, that's what I was saying. The royal, the royal we. we. Yeah. Yeah, it is the royal we, where it's like, first yeah. off, there is no royal we on this language. <laughs> And definitely not among your fans, nigga. Your you just use the word they instead of the word there in a quite li- Tariq's a blue check on a blue check professional tweet. Mm-hmm. You still have Trump errors. Yeah. Like you are a Trump era yourself. I mean, yeah, I it's also extra funny because I actually did read about that and listen to the people speaking. Tariq does not speak that language. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't sound like English at all. But again, it's just one of those, um, you know, easy grift points of like, oh, look, we have our slave history. I need to build a museum. Send me money. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Because because again, like this is the shit that is so obvious to me that he's a grifter. He'll post shit like this with his commentary. But again, he has the platform. How many people is he having on his podcast that speak this language? Let's see. I bet I bet I bet it's actually a lot. Mm-hmm. You think it's not a lot? And what I actually would like to see, since apparently black people are indigenous, what I would really like to see is that language side by side with some native languages, and you know, have a uh, someone who specializes in language talking about it. Oh, I well, would be curious. Look at this: someone who's not famous doesn't put their face all over shit at all, mm-hmm. like. And all they really do is like post news stories as the news already covered it. Yeah. And but then they just put their own headline. Okay. It's some cat I follow on YouTube called Water Sniper. Um, I'm sure they're conservative and I'm going to disagree with them on some shit like homophobia, transphobia and whatnot. But this is a person that's um, anti-miscegenation mm-hmm. and just generally a very generic conservative pro-black. Okay. And they have the video clip up that Tariq Nasheed put up with no fucking commentary. Oh. And apparently it's fucking three and a half minutes. Zephaniah. All right. So now we know the baby's name. Look at that. And this, Lexington, Kentucky. And only 372 views. Oh, I see a name. Miss Sellers at Baptist Hospital in Lexington. Oh, look, this nigga has a whole fucking article up. So, <laughs> all right. So, <clears throat> Let's do this real quick and fast. Um, so thank you, Water Sniper on YouTube, for actually giving a damn. Uh, Miss Sellers arrived at the uh, Baptist Hospital Lexington to give birth to her baby boy. And also thinking about just real quick what you said, um, where you were like, Tariq might look for a way to slut shame her. Mm-hmm. The baby did look pretty light skinned. So mm-hmm. could it be like, this is what happened when you bed winching? Exactly. Where's exactly. white zaddy? Why exactly. white zaddy ain't there? Oh, and I'm looking at another picture of this baby. He's not that light skinned. But no, exa- okay. but that is exactly the type of thing that I was like, Tariq, uh, kind of like RuPaul's Drag Race when like something wild happens during a lip sync and Ru doesn't know how to respond yet because Twitter hasn't responded yet. So Ru just makes the surprise face. That's kind of like what Tariq is doing. Like, this is some shit. 
I don't know how it's gonna pan out yet. <laughs> I'm gonna put it out here, and when my followers tell me what they will monetize for me, ah. then I will decide how I feel about it. <laughs> Damn, this is really man, water sniper coming after it. Um, so uh birth to the baby boy. Uh, Zephaniah was born without complications May 17th, 2021 at 5.06 a.m. Ms. Sellers had not abused nor neglected her child, yet a malicious CPS report, Child Protective Services, a malicious CPS report was made by Holly Rollins, a social worker at Baptist Hospital. Ms. Rollins never met with Ms. Sellers. On May 19th, 2000, dates... On May 19th, 2021, Ms. Sellers was discharged home with her child. Ms. Sellers was breastfeeding her baby uh, before leaving the hospital and her ride was outside. Without warning, Kamika Joyner, a CPS worker. Oh, yes, queen. Thank okay. you, Kamika. Yes. Yes. Fucking punk. Um, uh, where, where's that? Uh, back at the shit. <clears throat> Asked to leave. Do do do. She was well within her right. Uh, alleg most allegations were made against her. The CPS worker refused to give this information. Ms. Sellers asked the CPS worker to leave her room, which she was well with, which was well within her right. Mm -hmm. The CPS worker then contacted security and law enforcement. So see that and see that's the type of shit Tariq should be talking about. Yeah, because this fucking this uh, here we go with the fucking the class privileged Negro attacking the working class black person mm -hmm. so literally a black person called on the law dogs to break up the black family mm -hmm. this was not black feminism Tariq mm -hmm. this was black elitism oh wait what's the name of Tariq's YouTube show oh uh, Tariq some, 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 elite some, some, some. it's black elitism mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> excuse me uh, da 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 poop bop boop bop so they contacted security and law enforcement to detain Zephaniah at the hospital. The CPS worker had no court order to remove Zephaniah. Ms. Zellers attempted to uh, uh, leave the hospital with her child as she was legally allowed to do. Ms. Sellers was choked, attacked, and her two-day-old, okay, two-day-old baby was ripped from her hands. So it was right after she gave birth. Aha. Uh -huh. You can clearly see this violent attack in the video. Operation uh, Stop CPS, um, uh, they put a statement out to uh, to Kentucky CPS on August 13th. All right, so yeah, and it's the August 17th right now. Their statement is, uh, we have attempted to resolve this matter with your agency since the beginning of this nightmare that Ms. Sellers and Zephaniah have been forced to live. However, your agency refuses to see fault in the actions of Kamika Joyner, uh, that Kamika Joyner took on May 19th, 2021. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Darn it to... Uh, Kamika Joyner has a Twitter. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kamika Joyner uh, took on May 19th. Uh, Ms. Sellers' child, uh, child car seat was ripped from her hands with no regard to his safety as a newborn. As shown, the car seat swings recklessly while Ms. Sellers is being attacked. The encounter at the hospital is no different than that of the George Floyd murder, as Ms. Sellers clearly states numerous times, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Ms. Sellers just had a newborn child, and she is being assaulted by white authority figures, just as Sandra Bland was. Ms. Sellers was George Floyd that day. Um, so. Yeah, and again, going back to Tariq, super interesting that she was uh, saying, I can't breathe, but he didn't play that part of the video. Don't know why. Um, yeah, I found a petition on moveon.org that basically covers, uh, well, I mean, it is the same story. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't find any like uh, super different uh, details, but yeah, this is actually interesting. So the mom's name is on here. Uh, it can, how would you say her name? Which one? Right here. This last one. Kim. Uh, Kimari. Kimari. Yeah. Okay. So Kimari Sellers is the mom. 
and they do have a whole thing on uh, bringing him home. And they have the petition on sign.moveon.org to the Lexington, Kentucky House of Representatives, bring Zephaniah home and you can sign the petition. Yeah. Ooh, well, well, thank you, Kamika Joyner. Hmm. You really ran the track on that one, Joyner Kersey. All right. Wow. That's a very old reference. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. So that yeah. that that um, is a uh, damn. And here's another one, like from August 13th. So who was this? I'm gonna subscribe to this YouTube channel as well. Mm-hmm. A YouTube channel called um the Norman Nix. Sh- oh, never mind. I'm not subscribing. Yeah, Norman Nix, yeah. And well, the the rest of the title of the whole YouTube page is The Norman Nix Show, Father's Rights Education. Matter of fact, you know what? I follow people I disagree with. Resubscribe, tap that bell, show me what's happening. All right. Uh, So far, her GoFundMe has only raised $1,300. Well, there's no museum behind it. There's no museum behind it. Is she making DVDs? She is not making DVDs. All right, she ain't shit. Sure. So, so thank you, Tariq. Now she, and Tariq could have just found this. Right. She, he didn't even have to. He could have told his fans to find it. We could like tweet this, be like, who knows more? And considering that like Water Sniper is probably up Tariq's alley, he could probably just hire Water Sniper to just be your journalist. I mean, but keep in mind, all I did was type in a couple keywords and I found the move on petition in their GoFundMe. I didn't even go on like YouTube looking for videos like. Ugh. But yeah, that really is that shit when you want to talk about like who's a grifter and who's not. OK, well, who's reporting on the story and then just letting these people go like. Yeah. And let's repeat, he changed his stance on bonnets in public. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was he was in favor because it was about that. um that Texas principal mm-hmm. uh, some years ago that tried to make a rule, you cannot pick up your kids in pajamas yeah. and bonnets. Yeah. And Tariq was fully against that. And and it was a fucking populist argument. It's cause these people are working class and they're busy and they're just picking up their kids. Yep. He didn't say working class, but he made a populist argument you know, to the extent of his intellectual capacity, mm-hmm. which I don't even say that jokingly. He's not that fucking smart and like, and I, I had to my, like golf clap that one, mm-hmm. you know, however, whatever golf clapping is. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a soft. Yeah, I had, to, I, had to, I had to soften it up, you know, soft palming. Cause you know, I, I don't want a hard palm. Tariq, he gets carpal tunnel very easy. You know, you gotta be gentle with guys like that. <laughs> be careful before you give him gout again. Yeah, yeah. I can't I can't think of a um a punching up joke about homophobia on that one fast enough. Because oh. I can't think of one that properly punches up. So right. you don't make the joke. It's actually that easy, folks. Like you don't actually have to make every joke you think of. No, no, you don't. Have you ever considered that some jokes are probably throwaway material? Mm. <laughs> right. That's why I'm a better comedian than you. <laughs> hey. All right, climate change. Come on. Uh, rising seas may lead to extinctions of small nations. Oh, good. I know Phoenix Kalita's into that. Which is weird because I almost feel like this should be an update because we've covered something like this before. We ain't got time to cover stuff like that. <laughs> All right, we ain't got time to cover nothing but freedom, liberty, and the Negro and, um, and Jewish uh, conspiracy. They are working together against the white man's rights. Mm-hmm. All right, let's let's uh, let's take a look-see-poo at it, folks. Delible images emerge of panic and chaos in Kabul. President Biden tonight defiant and without regret. I stand square. Okay, uh, this... That video is not related to this fucking story. Okay. Just like Phoenix Kalita said during show prep, everything is about fucking Afghanistan. Yep. I am a millennial. It has been about Afghanistan since I turned 18 and had to sign up for the fucking draft. Fuck off. Mm-hmm. Afghanistan. Nigga, why don't you af- afghanerate these nuts, nigga? Mm. Wait, what? All right, that then I get frustrated and, <laughs> and that's how I talk. Come on, I speak goodly. All right, so that means I have to actually take a look at it. Article up by Patrick Smith. Doesn't get any more generic than that. Uh, That's so generic, it sounds like an alias. (laughs) Um, 
So island nations across the world are warning that they face catastrophic consequences of rising sea levels and possible extinction. I hadn't really thought about that. Is it, maybe I thought about it, but not enough. Yeah. No, because we covered a story about that. I'm pretty sure it was the Marshall Islands, which is like, um, for some reason, a United States territory in the Pacific. <clears throat> and people, we covered a story where like this dude was like, I don't want to move because I've lived here my whole life. My family is from here. But it was wild because literally every morning he would go out with like buckets and basically like, you know, with the buckets getting water out of his like front yard and shit because like of climate change like their shit was just it was just creeping up to the yeah and like i remember that story and there was literally just a picture of his whole fucking family like barefoot in this mucky gross water with fucking buckets just you know bailing out their backyards it was awful um i'm looking over here uh what you're talking about there uh i have nationalgeographic.com uh which is where the stuff you should know podcast is hosted from and apparently national geographic is just letting them go full on anti-capitalists like that show was getting fucking hilarious like ever since that whole trump thing the stuff you should know podcast <laughs> they have they have turned off whatever fucks they used to give and apparently national geographic is cool with that <laughs> all right so um <clears throat> but yeah and this article is from november 19th 2018 Hey, 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 I don't want to sign up for shit. Oh, fuck. All right. Well, you can't read National Geographic for free anymore. Damn. Well, I bet I bet Breitbart's covering it. Here we go. Let's oh, go. Let, no. no, let's see. No, be, be, yeah, since, since everybody wants to fucking paywall everything, let's go to the type of people that put their shit out for free. So yeah, let's Breitbart, put yeah. sea level rise brightbart.com mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i'm just gonna see what they're covering because this i i need to i need to see the news you need to see the news all right <clears throat> jesus christ ma'am okay mm -hmm. ah here we are breitbart rising sea levels all right so you know i'm just a person trucking along in america i'm, I'm a michigan resident i'm a pure michigan resident and you know, I know some liberals and they talk about stuff. And I figure, you know what? I better read some news about what they're talking about because they're nice people and they seem pretty smart and level-headed. So, um, <clears throat> holy shit, wait a second. Oh no, where's this go? All right, UN report, oh. urgent measures, money needed to fight climate change. I'm sorry, did you say tax increase? It says money needed. Tax increase? Okay. All right. And climate change is not in full-on scare quotes, <laughs> but it has that little mini, like the half quote, mm -hmm. where it's just one parenthesis. Yes. One parenthesis. A parenthesis. <laughs> just it's one. like a classy parenthesis. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the left-wing United Nations has issued a report warning countries around the world that time is running out to fight climate change now in square coats, mm -hmm. including reducing greenhouse gas emissions and donating money to the globalist organization. We're down to one globalist organization. The, the UN is the only globalist organization. Have it, we... it, it's fucking they, big Jew. They want you to give your money to big Jew. We've consolidated into like the one Jew, like the boss level Jew. That's the right. The <laughs> That's <laughs> all it is. <laughs> the boss Jew. Yeah, the boss level Jew. Man, can we, Quentin Tarantino, get on it. <laughs> he did. He gave us the bear Jew in the Nazi movie spinoff i would like to see an entire movie about the bear jew and of himself or what like a limited netflix series i would i would right. be down with Just, it which was actually a great scene because <laughs> did you ever watch that movie no there's a oh, yeah scene. i wait um i think i did but i wasn't really paying attention yeah because there's a scene where they just brought out a jewish guy who had a baseball bat and he just beat a nazi to death and it's kind of cool oh you and your your oldest uh, uh yes. kid well fuck, he's over 18 you want to say his name no no all right the damn it's just a fuck no <laughs> <laughs> Teen white skin says no <laughs> fucking yeah you two had were very adamant that i take a look at that scene 
right. Yes. <laughs> Uh, maybe just a little more. Let me jump down um, to like the middle of this article from Breitbart. We're not going to do the whole thing to you, but it is free. It is uh, free. Uh, the report said uh, 2021 is a crucial year and also quotes for countries to pour money into the UN's efforts to regulate nation's energy policies and practices, including ending the production and use of fossil fuels. Yeah, I love that they said production. So y'all niggas is gonna make more dinosaurs, put them in the ground, and I guess because of climate change, the earth is hot and they're gonna boil into oil faster. Mm -hmm. Did you think this one through? No. <laughs> All right. So apparently they're producing fossil fuels. Production. I mean, and but again, as we pointed out, this is free. Other shit is behind a paywall. Shit that's has quotes from real scientists saying, this is how fossil fuels work is behind a paywall. This is free. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, th there's really nothing to this article. It's right wing bullshit. But yeah, we tried to find a backstory and I'm sure we can find a free space for that. But nigga, National Geographic? Mm -hmm. God damn. Well, they did damn. get bought out a couple of years ago by that billionaire. They did? <laughs> yeah. Shit. All right. Yeah, which which strikes me as like them having the podcast is like that uh, BoJack Horseman thing. Where like oh. in the last season where it was like the super evil guy and he's like, go ahead and tell people and it's not going to change anything. <laughs> like the, or, That you know. fucking, that last season <laughs> of BoJack, it was like a whale, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, God, that, that scene and that last season in general. Mm -hmm. And I think they probably, like, I wonder how much of it was already written. And because, you know, like, a, like, I think one of the writing styles is they write the story and then it's punch up time afterwards. Right. And I wonder if punch up time came after they were denied a union and got the show canceled. Maybe. <laughs> and they're like, oh, really? Well, we have some opinions. All right. You want a last season to monetize, right? Mm. We'll give you a last season to monetize. And they did. <clears throat> So back to the uh, the article that we're covering of recent. Um, so uh, an alliance of 39 coastal and low-lying nations uh, said the um, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report, excuse me, was a major alert for the world and called on more powerful countries to do all they can to keep global warming to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius to save lives and livelihoods. But some of my lefty echo chamber tells me that, uh, particularly my lefty echo chamber I wake up next to in the morning, tells me that there are articles out saying what I've been saying for 10 years. Yes. No, because I've been saying this since 2010 before I knew what a podcast was. Mm -hmm. We're past the point of no return. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Whatever climate change is doing, it is be going to do. Mm -hmm. We're fucked. Um, yeah. So right now what they're saying is that like we can't avoid a certain temperature bump, but it doesn't have to get worse if we actually start taking it seriously. But we're not going to take it seriously. So No, we're not going to do that part. So uh, hopefully any young person tuned into this program, if you do not have kids, do not have kids. Don't do that to them. Do not write it right. I'm saying them as if they exist. That's the thing. Don't force new people to exist in this bullshit. Mm -hmm. And also there's an upside to it. There's an upside. You, all that money that would have went to raising a kid, just spend that enjoying the rest of your life. Just adopt a baby. Uh, you know what? Yeah. Adopt. Yeah. Ad yeah. Ad adopt a fucking kid. They need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know what? Adopt them before a Christian conservative is, conservative does. Seriously. Yeah, because that that's coming next. Is Christians will just adopt them and fuck them up. Oh, they already do. That. Yeah. <laughs> well, ones that haven't already. The new Christian family that's right. been trying so hard and they just can't get pregnant because they're the type of people that say we're pregnant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, that's like when I was set when I was 17, we didn't get an abortion. She got an abortion yeah. because we were pragmatic. That's another thing. Yeah. Like 
that's why I don't I don't follow the crowd. If I follow the crowd, I'd have been another dipshit dumb nigga. Excuse my ableist language there. A dipshit stupid nigga uh, fucking with a bunch of goddamn fucking kids. Mm-hmm. But instead, I did not follow what the homeboy said. Call me a simp all day. Uh-uh. When I was a teenager, chose my sexual partners wisely, and we talked first. And you know what we talked about? What's going to happen if these here condominiums that we're rolling on are not 100%? Because according to this dial-up internet through the telephone connection, Mm -hmm. they are not 100%. Mm -hmm. And so we both decide, yes, um, in Washington State at the time, uh, under the age of 18, you can get an abortion without your parents having to know. Good. We know that. We're careful. We will now be sexually active. The time came up. We said, hey, we already got a plan for that. Let's go do it. Got it done. Right. Got her some ice cream and shit afterward and um, and had a good sit down and watch the um, what's that movie? Um, if we can't be friends, I just couldn't take it. Oh, it was that nigga Val, Val Kilmer and uh, them Kilmer niggas. In, um... Uh, tombstone. The okay corral movie yeah tombstone yeah and, and we watched tombs and i shit you not that's really the story we went back to the house and watched tombstone <laughs> that is how shit really went down um but yeah back to this shit um a quote from diane black lane and th- that's her name black is her name diane black lane said quote We have to turn this around. Uh, uh, Diane Black Lane is the lead negotiator for the Alliance of uh, Small Island States. And they're um, and this and they're saying this in a statement uh, released by the IPCC. I don't know what that stands for. Fuck. Uh, Can you look that up? Uh, IPCC. And the IPCC confirms Uh, the experience of small island states uh, that cyclones are getting more intense and that sea levels are rising, but it also confirms we can still curb the worst of it. Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Thank you, ma'am. Damn, you know what? I've said that before on this show. And getting toward um, where the article closes out. Oh, God. All right, let's use this name in a way that's not disgusting. <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. And so from an IPCC report released Monday, it warned that while uh, while warming could be stopped by halting carbon emissions, sea levels would continue to rise, even in best case scenario. Because like another thing is, all right, we stop, not we, the capitalist fuck sticks stop their emissions and the war machine, the Pentagon, stops their emissions. Glaciers are already broken and methane gas is already being fucking released. So you've already, like the earth has already said, fuck it, I'm gonna emit some shit too. I'm gonna emit y'all niggas into my till. Ah, that was dark. All right. Miss Lita shook her head at that one. That's a head shaker. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Bad comedian. And watch this. I'm not going to go on Twitter and whine about being canceled. <laughs> Fucking clowns. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, getting toward the end of it here. Um, the, the Alliance of uh, Small Island States represents countries across the world, including Singapore, uh, Seychelles, Fiji, Papua New Guinea, Dominican Republic, Cuba, uh, the Bahamas, and Belize. Uh, so concerned, um, so concerned is the remote nation of uh, Kiribati in the Pacific, made up of three low lying um, archipelagos. Nailed it. Really? Um, archipelagos, sir. Yep, that's archipelagos. That's what it says. That's <laughs> not what it says. You saying that says archipelagos? Yes. All right, the archipelagos. Uh, they got they get to archipelagating on them niggas. Um, and they say that their um their tallest stand um to more to, to more than six feet above sea level. Uh, that uh, that plans have been made to physically raise its islands above the sea in partnership with China. <laughs> All right, well, get um get Akon on it. <laughs> the a rise of just three feet could submerge as much of two thirds of the uh, Kerbati by the end of this century. 
Um, the president of Maldives, Mohammed Nasheed, one of the world's lowest lying countries, which has four years, uh, which has campaigned for years for climate action, said the situation could not be more serious. It's real. It is real. Um, all right. Uh, what, what are we looking at? 556 in the AM. I need to be up in the GM plant by um by 7 a.m so uh yesterday while we were frustrated and having an adult beverage <laughs> fucking venus Kalita showed me a video clip and i'm gonna go ahead and bring it up on screen for folks looking at the um uh, 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 uh video show what up you didn't already play that uh, oh no this this is different police brutality oh yeah it's america buddy the hell is happening i'm trying to f11 the screen and the screen is trying to no i don't want to fucking sign up for reddit god damn it i will literally never make a reddit account reddit is a hideous website and i don't want to use it it's so ugly um all right so let's go ahead and share this um so you're gonna see a pig uh punching a human that is on a uh a, a hospital goddamn stretcher all right let me uh widen that out Oh yeah, there we are, and see the clip. There's no sound. To, oh wait. Go. Okay, now there's sound. All right, bunch of pigs around someone. Let's see. Okay, someone said the B word. I think was that maybe that was the person on the stretcher. Maybe said the B word. All right, so pigs don't like the B word. They don't like it because that's a misogynistic word. Mm -hmm. And so the pig is like, hey, you gosh darn misogynizer. Bitch. Oh, no. oh, they said it to a specific pig and that specific pig attacked them. Oh, okay. So what did that pig do earlier to that person? I'm sure it wasn't good. Oh, shit. Bitch. Oh, no. And Cuz wasn't even in frame. That nigga came from out of frame to do the and attack. I thought it was a punch. That actually looks like an elbow. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Let's see. Bitch. Oh, no. Go do that shit again. Yeah. Is it, he just choking this dude out? I think that might be a cis woman. Oh. It might be. It, it, excuse me. They might be a cis woman with the like the side of the head shaved uh, okay, style. So this cop is just choking someone out in a stretcher, though. Yeah, but that also I had to rewind it again. Like you said, it looks like that was a fucking elbow throw. Yeah. They sprint in. Let's see. Bitch. Oh, no. Go do that shit again. Any officer. Don't do that shit again to any officer call somebody a bitch this is the whole thing the b word is very bad i guess and the and and the pig with the crew cut and the glasses on straight up padded cuz on the back i want folks looking at the video to see that shit again like he doesn't pull him off he very gently, I, I, and you don't see men do this with men a lot, gently put his hand nearly at the small of his back. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of tapped his shoulder, didn't actually pull him with his left hand, right hand coming up to like the small of the back, upper waist, over the utility belt. Yep, and then slides his hand across his back and pats him on the back. Look at that. And then lovingly grabbed his tricep. Gently, lovingly grabbed his tricep. For the folks looking at the video, let's see that shit again in widescreen. Motherfucker. Woo! Men know how to be gentle with men when they're both armed, dangerous pig monsters. Any officer, right? God damn, that was so fucking loving. Gee, there should be heart reacts. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And that's the clip. Now, what I found interesting beyond this was that Phoenix Cleta showed me the video. I figured, oh, I'll find that for the podcast. I'm doing uh, show prep. I can find it. 
But apparently when you type in the words, uh, and, and, and I went to Googly, I didn't even go to Yahoo like I'm supposed to. I went to Googly and I put cop punches man on stretcher because I, I assumed the punch was on a cis man at first, but I think maybe a cis woman or queer person or something. Um, <clears throat> and you get results when you type in those words. 2018 CBS News police officer appears to hit teen strapped to stretcher. Uh, Worcester officer under investigation involving incident with uh, the do just load the whole headline. It ain't gonna hurt nobody. Incident with man on stretcher. Um, cop strikes a- an attempted suicide victim in the hospital. Video shows Portland police officer punch man strap. This 2016, it bounces around with the years. Uh, yeah, there's just multiple of these. A cop who slapped a suicidal uh, patient. That might be the same one. That's 2019. Oh, no. One is beating and one is slapping. One is New Jersey. One is LAPD. It's all over the place. <laughs> Body cam shows EMT punching restrained teen patient. (sighs) Thank you for your service. Well, the important thing is if you just give them more money, you can reform them. Because if you give them more money, they'll start seeing the rest of us as human and not behave like this. God. All right, Nikki Minaj, can I get you to honcho this story? Sure. Phoenix Police is going to honcho it. Nicki Minaj has kind of always been a piece of shit, though. Like, I don't yes. understand. Yes, but this was part of this was your show prep. Oh, cool. I love stupid bullshit yeah, like this. Yeah, because for some reason, people keep talking about her, and it's not because she can rap. Um, all right. So first of all, her husband's name is Kenneth Petty. So, I mean, the jokes are already writing themselves. Her last name is fucking Petty now. Oh, she, oh, I guess she would do the patriarchal name change. I'm sure she did. Did she at least hyphenate? I'm sure she didn't. She's always been a fucking pick me. Um, all right. So Nicki Minaj and her husband, Kenneth Petty, are being sued by a woman he was convicted of trying to rape in 1995. The victim claims that she has been harassed after declining Nikki's offers to change her story. The woman, Jennifer Ho, how? Huff? H-O-U-G-H. Huff? Ooh. I want to go with Huff because I don't want to inadvertently make this shit sound. I'm going to go with Huff because I don't want to inadvertently make this shit sound like a joke. Okay. All right. So the woman, Jennifer Huff. <sighs> Why does the Wi-Fi keep coming out? All right. Uh, so the woman, Jennifer Huff, was con- uh, the victim in Petty's 1995 conviction for first degree attempted rape. The reason he has to register as a sex offender. But if you recall, he recently took a plea deal for not registering. Huff claims, I can't tell you what Huff claims because this website keeps reloading. Um, <laughs> Huff claims that uh, in legal documents, uh, Nikki and Kenneth have directly harassed her. I'm just going to have to pull this up on another website um, because this is not working for me. So, um, but anyways, like the long and short of the story is that um, basically Nicki Minaj offered her money to recant her claims so that her husband doesn't have to um, register as a sex offender. Right, because right now he has to register. He got in trouble for not registering. And so basically what Nikki wants the victim to do is recant her story so that he has fewer restrictions on himself. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, let's see. So let, yeah, they started dating when they were 16. They knew each other, broke up, got back together. Um, okay, literally none of these websites are pulling up for me. Every website is crashing. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's the Wi-Fi, but, um, yeah, so that's the idea is that, um, Nicki Minaj was sending like lawyers to this woman's house, uh, sending people over to this woman's house, like having her followed, offering her bribes, just doing everything that she possibly can to try to make this woman recant her story. Like just so Nicki Minaj's husband can look better, but it's like, he's a fucking, he's a sexual predator. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) And they have a kid together. So, you know. Yeah. Um, and um, and so Huff uh, is uh, saying Petty um, sexually assaulted her at her home in the Queensboro of New York City, September 16th, 1994. 
Uh, the lawsuit states this, uh, that Huff, uh, at the time 16, was on her way to school when she saw Mr. Petty standing at a bus stop. Mr. Petty was also 16 at the time. The lawsuit alleges that Petty grabbed Huff by the back of her jacket, pressed a knife into her back, and told her to start walking. Like, you know the men that are um, more openly misogynist Mm -hmm. and they argue against people saying rape culture exists because they only want to say rape is like only the fucking, the attack in the streets Mm -hmm. is the only rape. Mm -hmm. Here's one. Right. Like, step up. Hey, Manosphere, where is you? Step up. This is the one. This is the one where you guys are supposed to step forward. And also- Where were the black men protecting her? Mm-hmm. Unless she probably wasn't smiling at she them. She wasn't smiling at them. God her. damn it. Kevin mm-hmm. Samuels was right. She mm. wasn't smiling. Uh, <clears throat> continuing. Um, said start walking. Petty um, uh, took Huff to a nearby house and she began pleading for her life, according to the lawsuit. After raping Huff, Petty looked in a mirror and stated, quote, I am the man. I am the man. Jesus. End quote. The whole quote is literally that sentence twice. And quite frankly, that just really sounds like he's a normal patriarchal minded man. Mm -hmm. That is what makes you the man, really. Right. Right. If yeah. you look at like a like Todd Jeffrey Foster out in Central Florida, mm-hmm. Todd Jeffrey Foster, Todd Jeffrey Foster, um, a rapist out of Central Florida who uh, he does the um, what do they call it? Ply with alcohol, mm-hmm. pry, ply, ply with alcohol. He do, he does that. He 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 likes the he he likes it Cosby style. He he likes an unconscious uh, victim to attack. Todd Jeffrey Foster, um, and and but he's the man. You ask other men like his age around him, he's a legend. He's the man because he got that much pussy. Consensually or not, doesn't really matter. And I remember an ill moment, an individual by the name of Sylvester Peterson. Sylvester Peterson. Um, I don't know his middle name, but he was laughing along in one of these conversations and straight up said. Yeah, but but Todd be he he always want to get them way too drunk. You know, Todd just be raping them hoes. Verbatim quote: Todd just be raping them hoes. Verbatim: Todd just be raping them hoes. Said by Sylvester Peterson, and this was said on Colonial Drive in Central Florida, Orlando. I heard it with my ears because I had one headphone out because the guys in the in that restaurant would talk more candidly if they thought I couldn't hear them. Right. And then um, Benjamin Kyle Harbor, also in that conversation, Benjamin Kyle Harbor in Central Florida, went to University of Central Florida with Todd Jeffrey Foster, said, and I quote verbatim, bitches fucking love that shit, bro. All right. But Todd is the man, just like Nicki Minaj's petty guy here. I am the man. I am the man, just like Robert Lee Pilcher, the third Spanaway, Washington State. Robert Lee Pilcher, the third Spanaway, Washington State, grew up on Spanaway Lane East, was on the football team, Spanaway Lake Sentinels, rapist, but asked the fellas around him, and he is the man, like Nikki Minaj's rapist husband, I am the man, I am the man. End quote. That's all I got for this story. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I just I like to I like to let people know who rape if I know who a rapist is I will tell you. Mm-hmm. All right, you got something. Oh, I was just gonna um. So in the lawsuit, um, the victim uh said that uh Petty and Minaj began contacting members of her family when he was arrested last year after failing to register as a sex offender in California. Uh, in days after the arrest, the victim was contacted by one of her child friends, and she mentioned to her childhood friend she wished it could just go away forever. 
the friend offered to help. And then a few days later, the victim received a phone call from Nicki Minaj. Uh, Minaj allegedly told the victim that she could have her publicist draft up a statement recanting the rape, but the victim declined. Within days, uh, the victim and family suffered an onslaught of harassing calls and unsolicited visits. It further alleges that one of the family members was offered $500,000 from Minaj to recant. On another occasion, uh, Huff was offered $20,000 if she signed a prepared document retracting statements. Minaj also offered to send happy birthday videos as a bonus to the victim's daughters. That is, that sounds fucking sadistic. My husband raped you. I'm married to him, so I'm cool with that and my brother. And I want to send your daughters, the daughters of the rape victim, happy birthday videos from the rapist wife. Mm -hmm. Like, it, that is either way, way, way disconnected or sadistic. There is no fucking middle ground. Uh, Huff said in a lawsuit that she actually had to move out of New York because of the threats she was, was receiving uh, and has been unable to work due to paranoia and depression and constant moving and currently lives in isolation. Um, I think Nicki Minaj is that disconnected because they have in here. Nicki Minaj has previously commented about her husband's past, writing in a post that he and the victim were, quote, in a relationship. What the fuck does that have? Even if they were, the fuck does that have to do with anything? Wait, but you it, can rape somebody in a relationship. So I. So if Nicki Minaj was 16 and he was 16 and they were 16 and the article says they started dating at 16. So you're saying he was cheating on you with her if you're denying rape right and so that's i guess that's worthy of marriage you know i dislike nikki minaj back when it wasn't cool mm -hmm. back when it was actually i dislike nikki minaj back when you were a hater for doing so yeah you're just hating you're a hating hater man come on man you know she's hot, bro. Don't you like the them childbearing hips? You're hating, man. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I don't know. Some people ain't right to me. And she had a little bit of flow on her, but some people I just don't fuck with. And it's not like I'm some ill judge of character and I just see shit and I'm like, you know, I just, I got a premonition, man. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just sometimes I just don't fuck with a motherfucker. Yeah. You know, and um, and I continue to not. And I guess y'all are just waiting for Maggie Stallion to go down the same route, aren't you? Yeah. Because all sociopaths go the same way because they don't actually give a fuck right. about you or any of a goddamn thing. I think that's the whole podcast, ma'am. I think so. We hit all our stories. I, I, I hope see dope see we did. And if we did not, my bad. Um, <laughs> I will be back. I intended to record actually after work yesterday. But we just, we got that disturbing household news that we now have to begin handling. And it's fucking Tuesday. Like, can I, like, I gotta get to the weekend first. I gotta get to my days off. I don't even have days off. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Oh, but, and they also told, yeah. oh, wait, 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 hey, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, you don't have days off. All right. Shit. And 6.15 a.m. Yeah, I'm going to go get my working pants on and go in here and work with Ed McGregor, who I think is a rapist. And that's why I'm saying his name, Ed McGregor, Edward McGregor, um, Grand Rapids, Michigan, lived in Grand Rapids, Michigan his entire life. The only time he left Grand Rapids, Michigan was to go to Florida, where like, and he, I, and I can't get him to just say it but the way he talks vaguely about his Florida experience, I think he got um, he got convicted of rape. Oh. That's what I think, but I can't get him to not to speak in a way other than vague. Mm -hmm. But then also, he is not very good at articulating any of his thoughts. So he may also not be able to speak beyond vague. Right. Yeah, and um, I might be able to find his Facebook and link it to folks, but I do think that Ed is indeed a rapist. All right. 
So let's go do that. WineCellarMedia.com. Uh, PayPal.me slash Phoenix and William. Patreon.com slash WineCellarMedia Fund. Let's move on. God damn. Come on. Stop live stream on Facebook. I know it's being live streamed. You ain't got to tell me nothing. I just want to.